Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and everyone knows that I love the little Walkera Ladybird. It was, well it is a great introduction to multi-rotors if you're someone that hasn't actually played with multi-rotors before because it's so small and it's so light and it's so tough. I mean you can fly this inside on a rainy day, you can fly it outside. They handle the wind surprisingly well and when you stuff it up, because everybody stuffs it up when you're learning, they tumble onto the grass and you pick them up and throw them again. I mean I've flown, I don't know how, countless hours on this, been through so many batteries and when I bought it, I bought spare motors and arms thinking, oh, I'm going to end up breaking this a few times. Nothing's broken. It's still good as new, despite the punishment I've given it. So that's got to be a top thing. I mean, I love it, love it, love it a bit. In fact, I loved it so much, I bought a second one, and put a camera on it, made it into an FPV ladybird, and I've had a lot of fun with this as well. So I see Walkera, maybe they saw my video and thought, ooh, that's a good idea, because they've launched their own uh, FPV Ladybird, you can buy them off the shelf now. Wonderful. Well, I haven't tried one of the ones off the shelf. They didn't send me one or anything. They haven't sent me anything, actually, Walkera. Damn them. But um, yeah, so I love those little quad rotors. Now, of course, these are fine for just flying around, having a bit of fun. But if you want to do anything a little more adventurous, if you want to do some really serious FPV, or if you want to put a GoPro on and do some filming, then you, to date, probably something like this has been your best option. It's the Phantom. It's the DJI Phantom and these have become very very popular because they come in a, a ready to go package. You know you get the transmitter and the, the aircraft and the little camera mount and everything and, and away you go and they're so easy to fly. Uh, there's been a few issues from time to time. A few people have reported that sometimes these things will fly back to China all by themselves when you least expect it. So you know and there's been a lot of software updates some people say the new updates are much better than the old and some people say the old's better than the new oh, i don't know anyway this is a very this one was sent to me for evaluating or basically doing a um, rf review of the system so i think you get it approved in australia so it's not a full-blown one it doesn't have the compass doesn't have other bits and pieces so i can't really use this as a basis for comparison with what i'm going to show you now because what i have now is a new box from walkera look at this i'll put it up here uh, big box it's the new QRX350, and when I say new, it's been out, I don't know, three months or something, two or three months. It's the Walkera's answer to the DJI, and obviously they've seen that DJI is making a killing with these Phantoms, so they thought, well, you know, let's improve on our starting point, and let's make something bigger, something in the, the 350 class, so people can hang a GoPro off it and see how it goes. So here we go, I have bought one. No, they didn't send me one, Walkera sent me nothing. I paid for this with my own good money, and uh, it was worth it just for the box. Do you know why? Because on this side it says <laughs> QRX 350 and then it says walking in error and towing the trend. I'll see if I can zoom in on this for you. If you've got HD, if you're watching this in HD you'll be able to read this I hope. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. What does it mean? Who knows? It's senseless. It's meaningless. It's silly. It's like someone said, what does Walkera mean? And someone in the back room said, well, well, actually it doesn't mean anything, but we're going to make something up. So let's say it's walking in error. Walk error. Woo! Oh, really? Anyway, so I'm not going to unbox this because I don't waste your time pulling stuff out of boxes, as you know. So I'll, what I'm going to do, though, is I'll set it up and I'll fly it and I'll tell you what I think of it. Because that's what reviews are all about. We'll look at the good and the bad. So stay tuned. Here it comes now. Okay, for those who want to see what's in the box, this is what's in the box before you unpack it. And once you unpack it and you put it together, it looks like this. See, isn't that lovely? Now, the props, um, they're a bit flexy actually. I'm quite surprised there's quite a bit of flex in those, um, which isn't good for efficiency, but I guess it makes them tougher for the inevitable knocks and bangs and dings. Has little spinner tops there you put on, uh, as opposed to a collet or anything. This screws right on. Like the NASA, it's got a keyed prop, so it's got some flats which engage with the motor instead of just relying on friction, which is not a bad thing. Now, in the back, the battery set up here, they have one of these, oh, one of these silly bloody connectors here. Oh, I can't even get it apart now. These are horrible, horrible little things. But I bought one of these to an XT60 converter, which make, but then there's so much stuff to stuff back inside the model. I'll probably just chop this off and put an XT60 on there because I don't want these horrible things here. Yuck. Just extra weight, doing nothing, extra bolt getting in the way. It takes a 2200 LiPo. Now I've got some 2200 three cells and I got one of these zippy 2450 comp or 2450 compact cells or something try them both out and see how that goes um, you've got to obviously install the undercarriage legs has little thumb screws with an allen key head inside so you can tighten them up really tight if you want to and break the plastic or you can just do them thumb tight and uh, wait till you crash before you break the plastic simple as that now there's two antennas on the Devo radio um, there's, there's no real instructions to tell you where to route these there did seem to be a place to put two little cable 
clips here, so, it will, so I'll put this one here, but it's going to drag on the ground, and this one just floats around in free space. They're both going to be vertically oriented, which is not good, because really you want one horizontal to give you some protection against cross-polarization when your transmitter antenna is vertical and the, this one's horizontal when, you know, when the antennas aren't lined up with the transmitter antenna. So never mind. There's a little JST connector here. I assume this is if you plug in the FPV extension or have one with the FPV. I don't know. I'll check that out later. Um, LEDs underneath on the arms, I suppose, just like the DJI, nothing special there. Little rubbery ball feet, which will catch and tip you over, I suppose, if you're trying to slide sideways on a smooth surface. That's about it, really. Not a lot to it. It's quite straightforward. Um, I did get this one as the RTF with the Walkera transmitter. Now it's my second Walkera transmitter. I don't like Walkera radio gear. It's actually really sucky. But now I've got two transmitters because I bought ready-to-fly packages. This is the 7. I also got the 4 with the little ladybird. And, um, oh god, why do I have so many radios I don't like? Um, anyway, it's, it's not a particularly good system from a technical perspective in terms of its RF. Not what you call very good. Um, it doesn't hop on many channels. And, I mean, the sticks are, yeah, yeah. It's a budget radio, 7 channels. Now, other thing that pisses me off about Walkera is in the back they have a holder for AA cells. Now nobody uses these anymore because they're unreliable and, you know, this is a 2.4 radio. It doesn't need 9.6 volts or 10 volts of battery. Um, so you think, oh, I'll just unplug it. It's got a JST lead. I'll plug in a, a suitable LiPo or LiFE. But no, the JST is clamped inside so you can't actually unplug it. Well, why bother using a plug if you can't unplug the damn thing? God, I had to do that with my Devo 4 as well. I had to pull it back off to get this plug out. So, oh, come on, Walkera. You make some really crap radio gear, and this is a good example of it. I'm not impressed. What I will do, I'm going to test it out as it comes, obviously with the Devo radio, but I'm going to take out the receiver that's in here. It's got a dimension receiver. Take that out, put it in a Free Sky receiver, hook my Tyrannus up and use my Tyrannus for this um, when I, if I decide to actually fly it around and use it for anything sensible. Uh, because Devo sucks, so I'll probably put this on eBay for a dollar. Maybe someone will be stupid enough to buy it. So yeah, I'm not complimentary about Walkera's radio gear, I'm sorry, but that's just the way I call it. Um, I wouldn't buy this if it wasn't part of the RTF package. And I, if you can buy the one without the receiver, which I couldn't actually see at the time, if you can buy the one without the receiver, then you can use whatever you like, because the receiver plugs into the flight controller just through you know, normal ways, as you would with, if you built your own multi-rotor. So there you go, that's it, we've put it all together. It's a little wibbly wobbly on its legs. It's probably, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Comes with instructions, if you can call them that, because it didn't even tell you how to route the aerials or anything like that. It just says do this. It doesn't tell you how to do it, it just says do it. Not so good. Um, it's a A3 size piece of paper, I suppose, with instructions on both sides. And it also comes with a disc. They all come with a disc, which is really, I think, just a copy of, oops, it's on the floor now, too bad. Two discs, ooh, one for the radio, ooh, I think, and one for the, yeah, user manual for the Devo radios, there you go, and a user manual for the QRX 350, but I think it's just a copy of what's on the paper, so why bother? And as I say, a full set of spare props, woohoo, and it's like a buddy box lead, why? Um, you've only got one transmitter, and it's a pretty standard buddy box lead, I'll find a use for that. Comes with a couple of Allen key wrenches for doing up stuff, obviously, and a bind lead, but I certainly hope it's already bound. I mean, why send out a ready-to-fly package if it's not already bound? And some little sticky bits of double-sided tape, I think, yes. Um, for what? And some cable ties. Again, for what? So, yeah, instructions could be greatly improved on. Now, I've got to go through batteries charging at the moment. I'll do the calibration, because you've got to calibrate everything. The, the sensors and the, the compass all have to be calibrated before you can fly it. So I'll do that now. Now one thing you've got to do with the wall care apparently is pull it apart and check inside, because some of the soldering is decidedly bodged. So they tell me quality control for construction is not so good. So I'm going to pull this one apart and have a look inside. We'll just check and see whether the things inside are as bad as people say. Now one little thing if you want to pull your wall carrier apart, like I'm doing here, is most of the screws are pretty accessible. They even give you a little Allen key wrench here for undoing the little bolts which are in each arm, and that's wonderful and great. But there's actually another screw down here which you wouldn't know, really know about unless you 
look very hard. Let's put this back on. And that's in here, in the battery compartment in here. There's a little screw, it's got a little piece of plastic covers it. A little plastic cover. And underneath there, there is a Phillips screw. All these are hex key, Allen keys, but underneath that catch there, that little thing, is a Phillips screw. So why all this difference? I have no idea. So I've undone all the screws now. When I tip it over, some will fall out. So let's take a closer look inside the Walkera 350 we've got. It's the flight controller. This is the equivalent to your KK2 board or your APM or whatever you want to use in other multi -rotors. This is the, the Devo one, the um, Walkera one for the 350. Now, we've got ESCs here. They don't look like your ordinary ESCs. They're custom designed ESCs, obviously, for the Walkera. And then you've got the receiver here. So if you, this is the one I bought with the transmitter. It was all the ready to fly. So if you're going to be putting your own radio gear in, this is where you'll probably put your own, your own receiver. Um, you know, your Spectrum or your Free Sky or whatever you've got will go in there. Servo leads into here. And yeah, so I'm going to take a closer look at the soldering and see if it's really as bad as they say on this one. Now, overall, the soldering isn't too bad. It's a lot better than some of the ones I've seen online, but it's still not up to scratch. It's still, I'm not happy with this because look, over here we've got some soldering going on. You can see these wires here, but there's a little ball of solder here. I'll just dislodge it. It'll come off. There we go. Look, I'll just move it out here. See the little ball of solder there? Now, with normal flying, that would probably come free. Oops, just fallen down there. That would probably, the vibration would cause that to come loose. And if it rolls around in here, boom, there goes your ESC. And if your ESC goes boom, well, your little ladybird falls from the sky and becomes a pile of broken plastic and wires. So, yeah, I'm afraid that's really bad. I mean, these are basic things. You, you always check after you've soldered something, make sure there's no little balls of soldering floating around. And if you do the job properly, there won't be any balls of solder. So, although the rest of the wiring's relatively tidy, that little thing alone gives the wall carer a fail from the perspective of quality control and the soldering. I'm sorry, not happy with that. And looking a little bit further, I'm getting less satisfied by the minute. Over here, we've got some wires for the ESC that are soldered on. Look how long this piece of uninsulated wire is and look how close it is to the legs of this IC here. This is bad. I mean, this really the insulation should come right up to that pad. There should only be a little tiny bit of wire exposed solder directly to the pad. This kind of stuff here, it's not good. And there's also little daggy bits. If you saw the soldering tutorial I did just a little while ago, see it's got a little sharp edge daggy bit hanging out of this solder joint. That means they've burnt the flux off when they were doing it, and therefore it's, when they've taken the iron off, it's left a little jag. So that joint could be, you know, not as good as it should be because obviously the flux has been burnt off before the joint is finished. The same goes with this one. Where am I? Get it into shot for you if I can. Ooh, working backwards on the camera. Um, same goes with this one here. Am I in shot? Yep, there we go. See the little sharp daggy bit on the end there? That means the iron's been too hot and they've taken so long to do the joint, the flux has burnt off. Bad, 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 bad. Okay, I very quickly re-terminated the worst of the solder joints um, here, as you can see. And I, I, this is obviously, they used tin-based solder, horrible stuff. I replaced it with the lovely leaded solder, no hippies here. And so these solder joints are now far better than they were, no chance of the wires shorting out. It's a bit long, that one, but oh, I'm in a hurry. Um, but nice round balls, plenty of flux involved, and um, these wires will not be shorting out on other stuff or coming off the board, which is really important with a multi-rotor. Okay, so there you go. It's the weather's a bit crap now at the moment for flying, so I'm going to fly this tomorrow where the weather's supposed to be better. But um, so far, my opinions of the wall carrier quality control, as other people have noted, the soldering sucks. This isn't as bad as some I've seen, but the soldering sucks. I mean, that little solder ball could have rolled around in there, blown up an ESC, goodness knows what could have happened. Probably explains why some people have had unexplained failures. I mean, wires come off, uh, they fall from the sky. Yeah, come on, Walkera, you can do better. My original experience with Walkera with the little ladybird, brilliant. Got two of them, love them. This is souring me to walk to the Walkera brand. I've got to say, I'm, you know, getting less and less impressed by the minute. But now the ultimate test, of course, is I take it outside and I fly it. And uh, when the when the weather improves a little bit, I shall do that. And uh, we'll see how we go. So I'm sorry, it's a part. It's a two-parter. I didn't want it to be two-parter, but it's gone on too long anyway. So I'll get this part edited up, stick it on the on the tube. You can have a look. And uh, if you've got any comments, put them in the bottom. Questions in the bottom. If you think other people might benefit from this review, give it a thumbs up so they can find it. And now I'll get on and do some other stuff on the bench.